Hi, I'm Congresswoman Michelle Bachman from Minnesota's 6th Congressional District. We're at a critical time in the history of the Middle East. The overwhelming majority of Americans understand that our alliance with Israel is critical for both of our nations at all times and that strengthening it now in the face of growing uncertainty and instability throughout the Arab world is just common sense. But shockingly and frankly, unforgivably, at this time of unprecedented flux and rising dangers, President Obama just told Israel that Israel has to give up its right to defensible borders in order to appease the Palestinians. That would be the same Palestinians who don't even recognize Israel's right to exist. The president is the most powerful man in the world, but he's not all powerful and his is not the only voice in America. And when it comes to Israel and Israel's importance to America, his positions are shared by a tiny minority. Most Americans recognize that Israelis and Americans are two sides of the same coin because we share the same values and the same aspirations. We even share the same exceptional mission to be a light to the nations. After all, the image of America as the shining city on the hill is taken from the book of Isaiah. I was raised in a home full of love for Israel. We learned that our Christian faith is rooted in Judaism. Without the laws of Moses, without the temple in Jerusalem, there would have been no Sermon on the Mount. It was this love and appreciation for Israel and the Jewish faith that brought me to Israel in the summer of 1974 to volunteer at a kibbutz near Beersheba. And it was during my time at the kibbutz in that first visit that I came to understand that Israel is not merely the cradle of my faith, it's the greatest strategic asset that the United States has in the region. And I realize that the forces of terror and mayhem and hatred that Israel needs to keep at bay are the same forces that threaten America. And if we want to secure our interests in the region and protect our national security here at home, the best policy is to ensure that Israel stays strong. And I know that these are the views of people in my district. I know from my travels around the United States, I also know that these are the views of the overwhelming majority of Americans. And again, amidst the tumult now engulfing the Arab world, Israel's importance to the security of the United States and our own interests can't be overstated. For we're seeing that from Cairo through Benghazi, the, when the Arab tyrants are challenged or toppled, it isn't necessarily peaceful lovers of liberty who are rising up to replace them. Rather, as happened in Iran in 1979, as these tyrannies are toppled, the populist forces most prevalent today harbor radical, illiberal values and interests that are antithetical to America's values and interests. President Obama rightly asserted that America's commitment to our values is being tested today. But contrary to what he said, upholding American values doesn't require us to support the rise to power of those who reject the bedrock notions of liberty, of individual rights, and freedom of religion that are the foundations of the American creed just because they managed to convince a majority of voters to support their intolerant message. Because upholding American values does not involve saying we will support whatever political forces win the most votes. Upholding American values means that we make clear that we have standards of human conduct. And if you don't subscribe to them, then while we may cooperate with you when we have an interest in doing so, we will not consider you a credible ally. Upholding American values means standing shoulder to shoulder with those who share them. And first and foremost, that means that we must stand with Israel. I stand with Israel. Our policies in the Middle East must be guided by this very basic imperative. We must ensure that Israel is strong and gets stronger so that it remains capable of defending itself at all times and under all circumstances. God bless you. And may God bless the state of Israel and certainly the United States of America.